Hi, this is Jadi. Today we're going to be talking about the first Olympic Games. Now, as you can imagine, with all sports, especially competitive ones, things tend to evolve. But in judo, I don't feel the evolution is happening the way that you would expect, or at least from what I've noticed. So I'll give you an example. Uh, in the past, uh, Olympic diving was like this, so it's just like going to the river or the beach with your friends, how he would, we would jump and do those flips. And now compared to today's Olympic diving, minimal splash and very complex and hard to do technique. But when it comes to judo's throws and even newaza, I've covered this in the past, I'm not going to talk about newaza, it, it's... It almost feels like the aim before was to grip, throw, the swiftness, the entry, everything was there. But uh, before I talk about all of this, I'd like to remind you that my book, The Origins and History of Judo, is now out, not only in English, but also in French. Donc, il est disponible aussi en français. And so... I'd like to tell you that it is bilingual, and when I say bilingual, I'm not using the original manuscript. I'm actually doing a modern uh, translation, so all the 90 pages are my work and my hard work, so please feel free to check it out below. So let's start with the legendary Isao Okano gripping immediately striking with his signature seoenage and doing it from the standing uh, which is very impressive in competition you see i believe abe hifumi doing it again let's notice the entry and let's notice the speed now when it comes to the evolution of judo i do believe it evolved a lot in terms of the gripping and gripping strategies and how to put on pressure with all the styles that you have you know deep down the back back of the neck etc but the swiftness and the entry um, an effortless throw has been established i believe long ago so now let's keep uh, moving forward uh, i want to talk about uh, isao inokuma not okano um, he had a very tragic ending towards his life but let's celebrate his uh, victories he had i believe one of the best tai otoshi do you would see look at his feet uh, the hand it it only comes at the end it's a hand technique but the way he enters and positions himself what he does is he rotates his uh, opponent as you can see but what he does later on is that he would jump into position he doesn't step one two it's almost like he's doing a drop tayotoshi but he would actually jump and immediately positions himself let's take a look at the next example that he does it is absolutely brilliant it looked very quick but there is something that's happening he jumps off both of his feet in order to position himself look at this grips be behind the neck and then look at that jump that he performs and then positions himself absolutely brilliant and look and then he has a little bit of hip in it but look at that leg stretched across and then he cuts with his hands he had one of the most beautiful taotoshi even by today it will still rival some of the best so taotoshi a lot of people would ask why is it not a leg technique well, the reason is it is just positioning a, a wide stance. That's all it is. But all of it from the unbalancing to the cutting down with the hands, it's all the hands. Hence, it is a te waza and uh, it needs to be swift. And look, this is again 1964. Let's take a look uh, at this Kosoto uh, switch, uh, jumping Uchimata, finishing with a massive Harai Makikomi. Look at this. He twitches with kosoto and then continues it with a jumping uchimata makikomi and then he gets a wazari he stands back up he comes from him but behind continues with a harai makikomi look at that combo it's beautiful now today of course we all like to celebrate uh, inoue kose's uh, one step uchimata but um, here I'd like you to point out how they grip and immediately attack this is something that's 
due to the evolution of the game you, you rarely get to see there are fast ipons but uh, they gripped and mainly moved a little bit and then threw each other look at this massive uh, scooping throw uh, he tried to attack and here again he uh, there's another attack of serenage countered because of the weak gripping goes low grips scoops up perfectly look at that rotation and then plants fully for a pawn again rivals today granted if it's allowed but i think you get what i mean in terms of entry in terms of uh, swift uh, throwing effortless looking throws they always had it even if you look at old uh, demonstrations from the 50s or fights from the 50s uh, kimura for example etc I do believe their technique will always rival what we have today. However, the evolution of the game is now due to the too much of rules and Shido, and it's going too much into the gripping here. A dive for the leg. Uh, Anton Giesing obviously does not phase him. Look at the guy's bent over posture, almost like a wrestler. And so he capitalizes on it, rotates him around, blocks for a beautiful Sasai, he was known for this technique, and of course, we cannot talk about Sasai or his uh, Guruma without talking about the legendary Muneta who came decades later. And so, as you can see, uh, in terms of setups, entries, the effortless throwing, all of it is still there. So, the evolution of judo, Olympic wise, compared to others, it's very interesting and it's very. Uh, uh, subtle you have to be a judoka in order to really get it so here look at this one step tobikomi uchimata and look steps immediately flows through and then cuts upward now again even now one of the best uchimatas you can do is the one step uh, that's why you rarely see it even with legends like Yoshida, uh, Tsukasa, and Maruyama. So uh, Inoue obviously was one of the best, or if not the best at it, but he as well had different variations depending on the situation. So even back in 64, you had that swift uh, one-step uh, Uchimata. Here he's going for the leg, and then a beautiful Kosoto Gari. So he was going for the knee, uh, bent over he he but you see with the jacket once you have a good grip if the guy is bent over and you're standing upright it does not really matter and here once another one it's beautiful so bends over his opponent brings him closer so he can get close from the side and then reaps the heel takes a step forward and then for a beautiful ippon now if, this, if that does not remind you of Kohara, you are missing out. Let me show you very similar. Again, this is 1964, first Olympic Games. And look, we still have this. And even now, Kohara is considered, is you know blowing minds with this type of technique. Uh, effortless throwing has always existed. This is what I love. And so we can argue about so many things but when it comes to the quality of the throws it will it should always be there look at this you know one step and then you sweep rotates him around and then goes for an okuri ashi almost because the legs were parallel but uh, ends up you know, sweeping him forward because he changes his waist uh, how it was facing and it ended as the ashi harai so uh you can see very much like I showed you with the setup video that I did a few days ago. Uh, let's see it again. So it's a simple rotation, goes to the side, much like Fabio, but without all the trampling that he does and just sweeps and then steers with the hands. So as you can see, in terms of evolution, I think judo evolved in terms of fitness. Physical fitness has evolved a lot. Uh, in the last decades uh, recovery science building muscle uh, strength uh, training all of these things obviously uh, evolved and judo now you know with people like ono and how he pulls and then throws you with his spinning uchimata that takes a lot of strength with the hands and with the leg and 
of course the entire body being moved but uh, also the gripping the gripping strategies have evolved in in many ways but one of them unfortunately is to play the shido game and making the other look passive or to look very busy not truly catering to grip and throw swiftly like you see here in the 1964 the the gripping in 1964 is you, you almost like you had to barely fight for the grip a lot of them had the the grips and then whoever uh, put on the most pressure and uh, moved their opponent better was the one that would get the ippon and of course the attitude if you're scared it's going to show on you and you're going to have hunched shoulders and you're most more like most likely to get thrown of course uh, newaza was also something you had okano and his loop choke you had uh I believe Gissing also won in his finals by uh, by passing guard and Osai Komi. So it, it had all the elements, but now I believe the evolution is more towards the fitness, the strength of the athletes, and also uh, gripping uh, strategies, gripping styles uh, as well. But in terms of swift uh, throws and entries, it always existed. So the evolution of judo sports-wise, I find it to be very interesting compared to other sports such as um, diving, for example, technique-wise. Uh, so if you have anything to add, please let me know down below. Consider supporting me on Patreon, and don't forget to check out my book. This was Shadi, and thank you for listening.